Very exciting, Kira. There's a boy here today. <laughs> we got a boy. It's the first time we've first invited one. a boy. You're the first boy who's been invited to the altar in the Temple of Doom <laughs> that we have here. So, Kira, you know the story already, and you hate me telling this story. I do. But I'm going to talk about how I met Kieran. Okay, so you hear it? Do you hear the story? It's. Is that, what the, it's, is it's that how we're starting this episode? Sounds wrong. It sounds wrong. There's an element of truth to it. It's not all <laughs> truthful. It's not as bad as what it sounds. All right. okay. okay. Not long after lost Stephen at the start of the year, Kieran tagged me in a post on Instagram. And the post was about a session of community acupuncture that you were doing uh, in the cuts uh-huh. in Dariaki, which is very close to where we both live, actually. Not the cuts on your body. Not the cuts. No, it's a place. <laughs> It's an industrial estate. It's an acupuncture cut. <laughs> yeah. It's an industrial estate outside Dunmurray. Anyway, he tagged me in the post about this um, ear acupuncture, which is a five point auricular. Is that auricular, right? Auricular. Yes, so acupuncture of the year. Acupuncture, which is good for trauma and grief and stress and anxiety. Any any kind of negative energy in the body. It's it's used to treat it. So you were doing a free, like a sort of an open free session for people who felt they needed that. Yeah, of some sort, yep. So you had tagged me in it and I remember seeing it and thinking, oh yeah, that looks brilliant. I really, I feel like I do, I definitely need that. And then I messaged you and I said, thank you for tagging me in that post. You had really like to come. Do you need me to sign up or whatever? And you then said, look, it's okay. I know you've been through a hard time. I think you maybe might rather come to a one-on-one session rather than to the big group. I said, oh, yeah, thank you so much. And then you said, you know, we'd also do the deep tissue massage and the cupping. And so off I went to an industrial estate to meet a man I had never met, set eyes on before, for a massage. Fabulous. And cupping. And cupping. <laughs> and I didn't think twice about it. And away I went. And that's how I met you. And then I was really surprised then, as we had a bit of a chat first, and... I was talking a lot about Stephen Clements and, you know, losing Stephen and different things that we did or said on the show. And you were looking at me really blankly and you said, I had never listened to the show. <laughs> and I assumed you is were. This, is this what you said? You hate this bit? <laughs> no, I don't mind that bit. It's the bit where I'm a creepy guy in an industrial state that gives out massages. <laughs> <laughs> And I couldn't, because you said, no, I've never listened to the show. I didn't really know Stephen. And I was like, why did you message me then? Because I just assumed, because I've had so many messages from people who had been listeners of the show that I assumed you were a listener who had, you know, was upset about losing Stephen and knew that I was and you wanted to help me. But you were actually just a kind person who saw that I had lost somebody and reached out to me, but you had no idea. You hadn't been previously been a fan of the show. And that really blew my mind. It was just pure kindness. Yeah, it's not that I wasn't a fan of that show. I just, like we have laughed about before, I'm not really, like, I don't watch an awful lot of TV or listen to, I just wasn't aware of the show. And I think I'd seen, I'd obviously, Stephen's death was high profile. And I had seen you were tagged in a post or, or somebody had mentioned you in a post. So when I was putting up, that the day or the week of Stephen died, my friend's mum died by suicide as well. So. I used to run these community acupuncture events once per month and I decided to run it the week after it was actually Bernie's funeral that coincided with with Stephen's death as well and I don't know why or or what it was it was something I seen and I tagged you in it too Um, but yeah it it wasn't it was just because I knew you were going through grief and grief's a horrible thing to deal with it really is so I was hoping probably tagging you and hoping that you would see it and think there is ways, not, not to deal with grief, but to cope with it, to try, like almost manage it. manage it naturally, as opposed to, you know, medication or drink or whatever, that there was these holistic therapies that, that doesn't take grief away, but sometimes take the edge off it a bit. Well, definitely. Do you know what? It was even just the, the kindness that you thought to tag me, let alone what, you know, the friendship that has developed since that, that, you know, to me, I was just like, Oh my goodness you know and at the time there was such an outpouring or like an overwhelming outpouring from so many people that's really what kept me going but anyway that's not what we're here to talk about today that's just kind of setting the scene but you so you are a sports therapist tell us about yeah. tell us about what you do okay so i i run a small business called cm sports therapy in an industrial estate 
but um, it's based in a gym. So it's based in XL gym and we we'll look at preventing injuries initially, but where, where somebody has a minor injury, we also look at allowing them to recover from it. Um, probably have specialized over the last year or two in working with some of our top boxers. So what happens when, when a boxer signs up for a fight, they have 10 weeks to get themselves in the perfect condition, physically and mentally. Um, and what we will do is we'll have weekly sessions uh, and allow their body to recover from hard running, hard sparring, cuts, bruises, um, like fatigue and that as well, and just give them a bit of advice around recovery methods um, and optimal performance on the night. So we want to talk about the acupuncture and the different uh -huh. things that you do. But before that, talk about the craziness that you have managed to rope. Kira and I both into. So first I was roped into it, and then Kira, you led me into a false sense of security. I <laughs> thought I was going down for a paddle. <laughs> yes. So uh -huh. that day, that the first first that I met you, you had talked about the cold water therapy, oh. cold water swimming, yeah. and I thought, yeah, that sounds great. Yes, yes, because I, I, I love the sea, and I, I knew I wanted to get in and swim in the sea. And I went home and my, uh, I was telling my boyfriend about it and I was under an electric blanket on the sofa and he goes, you think you're getting in the sea? Like you're under an electric blanket. In, in Ireland? In Ireland. You're going to leave that electric blanket and walk through a fully heated home to another electric blanket <laughs> upstairs to fall asleep. In your fleecy jumps, <laughs> fleecy socks, fleecy house coat. Surrounded by cats. Yes. So <laughs> it seemed like the most ridiculous idea that that would be something that I would do. But I've done it. So and numerous times now. I've got addicted to mm -hmm. it, in fact. So, and then you saw it on Instagram and said to me, here, I want to get in the sea as well. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know what madness. I wanted to, you know, just, you know, the whole reason why we're doing this is to show people that there is different ways to help you on your journey, whether that's recovery from whatever. And I went, well, I have to give all these things a go. It's too easy to pop a pill or whatever. We'll have to try all these things. And if Kate's saying it's amazing and it feels amazing and it's really helping her and it's great, then, of course, you have to give it a go. I did really think it was just a paddle. It was totally <laughs> desolations. Um but yes, I mean, I've only been a few times, but I absolutely love it. It's unreal. It you, is. You it's say, unreal. You're addicted to it, and that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. If I don't go swimming in a week, I really miss it. And there's different physicists in that talk. What, what is an addiction? And you're not addicted to the substance or to a tablet or whatever. You're addicted to how it makes you okay. feel. It's, so, it's a form of escapism. And for me, cold water, like as you said, I'm a relaxed person. I'm quite chilled out. But sometimes my mind's just going a million miles an hour. I've been an overthinker. And the low of kind of got a calm demeanor. Sometimes my brain's just 100 miles an hour, even at night. And for me, when I, the colder the water, the more I switch off. Wow. So I can get in the cold water and probably for the first time that day or that week or whatever, I'll just be fully present in the moment. So I'm not worrying about kids if they go to school, if they do this, if they, I've got him at such and such a time and constantly going. On, the, on a watch, do you know what I mean? So for that 20 minutes or half an hour, I'm just, I always laugh at people and say, embrace the cold, but to me, it's just like being still in time. It's like time's an illusion when I'm in cold water. And I just, I am addicted to it, but it's, to me, it's a positive addiction, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna step in here because, because I'm the newest, the newest member of the Madness Swim Club. The swim club. <laughs> Helen's um, Bay Watch. Yes, Helen's Bay Watch. club, actually, it's yeah, not yeah. us. But no, yeah. We want to be part of their club. Yeah. We are newbies. But um, I think, describe how it feels. Like someone hasn't done it, they're just going, there is no way I'm getting into freezing cold water. But describe what happens when you get into the water. Okay, so getting in, there's two different ways. And Kate has done one, and tomorrow we're going to do another, which is to jump off the rocks and fully submerge yourself. <laughs> but when you're just jumping in, out that window there away from you here. It's, it's, it's not it is hard it, it's a hard thing to do it's we do it at sunrise and there's a method behind the madness and the two main things is being in the water as the sun comes up is one of the most magical things you will ever experience and i mean with all the billions of people in the world you're probably in a 0.01% of that moment in time of being in the sea as the sun rises, like right in front of your eyes. 
And secondly, cortisol, which is the stress hormone, okay. produced in the adrenal glands and the liver is at its highest upon waking. So as soon as you wake up, that is when you are stressed. And I always thought that yes. stress, yeah. So I thought as the day goes on and you are different things are triggering stress, that's when your stress levels rose. And obviously so what do you think, what causes that then? That is uh, the most surprising thing I think I've yeah. heard today. So your cortisol levels is at a test when you first wake up after a restful sleep. Yeah, so when you, <clears throat> when you wake, there's obviously different chemical cocktails happening in the body, melatonin that's released and the growth hormone in that is released, but uh, cortisol is also released. And so when you wake, that's why people that suffer with depression and stress and that sometimes feel very, very difficult to get out of bed. It's like, oh. Now I get it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I have been there and getting out of it. Sometimes, like, you've did all these things in life, you climbed all mountains and swam in cold, frozen lakes and that, but sometimes just taking the first step out of bed so, so hard. And it's just a build up of cortisol. Um, so that's, that's another reason because the cold water shocks that and reduces your cortisol levels. Okay, so talk to me more about that. How, what, what happens? Because you explained it brilliantly to me when I was in the water uh -huh. with my cortisol levels <laughs> through the roof. <laughs> so explain, because it was brilliant the way you explained it that day. So you're kind of like, I call it address your stress. You, your body goes into a, a form of stress. It is a stress, stressful situation. You have dragged yourself out of bed at, half four, five o'clock in the morning, whatever, drove in a car, like everything, even now after doing it for a couple of years, sometimes my alarm goes off and I just wanna hit it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that you're dragging yourself out of bed to go and strip off to your, your shorts or your, your swimsuit and get into the cold Irish sea at half five in the morning. It is a form of stress. Your body shakes, but it's controlled stress. So it's teaching you that the safe breath works very important. As soon as you enter the world, the first thing you do is breathe. As soon as you leave the world, the last thing you do is breathe. And every minute of every day in between, you breathe. So when you are stressed, your breath is very, very light, very shallow. And the first thing that I tell people to do as soon as they get in the cold water, so no matter how experienced you are, as soon as your chest is submerged in the water, you lose your breath. Mm -hmm. And if you can deep, have big, deep, conscious breaths, that cold sensation just starts to go, 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 because you are teaching your body, it's, it's that old saying, becoming comfortable in the uncomfortable, but what you're teaching your mind more is, yes, I'm stressed, but I'm resilient enough to come through it. So. And this is the resilience building. This yes. is what the penny yes. dropped with me when I was up to my neck in the cold water. <laughs> I was like, I got it then, yeah. I got it. That's it, that is, it's, it's, it's making your mind more resilient through, I said, it sounds like a form of torture, but it's very, very manageable. It's actually quite enjoyable. And the best thing about it is because there's so many endorphins being released in the body, you come away with like a natural high. And there's, there's websites all over the world have this thing, it's like a hashtag post swim high, and they take pictures of people going into the water when they're standing freezing and bleary eyed and coming out with just big beaming smiles. It's like a natural, natural high. That, that's it. So it releases endorphins, serotonins. Your serotonin, which is the happy hormone, yeah. raises the endorphins because what happens, the blood leaves your extremities, so your hands and feet get extremely cold initially, and all the blood goes towards your organs. It's, it's a survival instinct, so it's all to protect your, your body. That's what happens to the explorers. They get frostbite and they lose toes, and your body doesn't really care because it can still go on. Okay. But obviously with organs, it's a different thing. So the blood leaves the or, or sorry, the blood comes to the organs and starts heating up. The core starts heating it up, and it's all to keep you alive. And because your body's working hard, working hard, it's burning calories, and it's almost like a workout in itself. And because you are still here after it, your, your body just releases a big wave of endorphins. Like well done, you've done it, you survived, and it's just a natural, like yeah, like such, what, such a buzz. Yeah, it really is. Uh -huh. um, you know, and as I say, I've only done it a few times so far, but. What I didn't realize um, when I first get into the water, right? And this is because, you know, you get in when you're on your holidays in Spain mm -hmm. or wherever, and it's kind of warm. You're like, oh, and then you very quickly you climb a taste because it's warm. But when I first got in with you guys, I was like, I can't stay this cold. Like, you know, it's my <laughs> whole brain was going, get out, get out, get out. I didn't realize that my body would adjust. Uh -huh. I didn't realize that, and I'm 42. 
I, I didn't know that your body after 60, 90 seconds, whatever it is, that it would adjust and that would, I would actually feel okay and I would feel warm and my breathing would settle. So that was the biggest. So that's what that is. Mm. You, you, your body and mind is regulating. Mm -hmm. So that you have now become comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. Yes. So the seawater is the exact same temperature as when you stepped in two minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And instead of gasping for air and going, oh my God, I, I can't stay like this. You're now, well, I am, I'm breathing, I'm, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. So you have became comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. And if you can put that into anything in life where kids are going mad or, you know, yeah, just business slows right. down due to a var whatever it is and you can just breathe, kind your, of way breathe your way through it and it sounds a wee bit hippish and I, I mean it won't apply to everything but it does because like it's how you re react to the situation Do, if you breathe and calm everything down and go right what what can i control here i can control my breath i can control how i react to these circumstances then it can't be applied to everything so it's i mean i know i worry less, stress less, and that is part of it is because of the cold water submersion. And do you feel like a reset then every massively, time? Massively, massively. So no matter what is going on in my life, I find that it can be soft from jumping in the sea. And I know that sounds a wee bit high, whatever, but it, I think it's just, you know, when you go through something negative in the day or the week or the month, you think about it, don't you? So something happens, you'll maybe play it over in your mind and you'll probably play it over in your mind too much and overanalyze it and that's part and parcel of, of being an overthinker or whatever it may be but i will not think about anything for 20 25 minutes in that water i'll get out feeling great and i'll go okay well i've started the day doing, doing something very difficult i've got out of my bed i've dragged myself down to helen's bay or wherever it may be and i've got in the water and stayed there and breathed through a stressful situation so no matter what happens the rest of the day I've did something positive and I've overcame something tough already. So bring it on, almost. But even apart from being in the water, um, and I want to ask you about the other health benefits in a second, even apart from being in the water, I find it's good for me mentally because I feel free. Because like one minute I'm lying in bed, next thing I've got my swimsuit on, I've grabbed my towels and I've got put you know warm clothes on and I get in the car and I know I'm driving towards the sea and there's hardly anybody about. But then whenever you get onto the beach, um, in particular where, where we've been to Helens Bay, um, there's, but there's other people doing the same thing and you know, passing the time of day with you and chatting to you and, and it's lovely. Yeah, and straight away there's a camaraderie there because you're up at uh -huh. half five in the morning doing this crazy thing together. So even though you've never met these people and you might walk past them in the town, because you're all there at crazy o'clock doing a crazy thing, you, mm -hmm. you just start chatting because you're like, found, uh -huh. found your tribe there's doing the same thing. And that's what it is. It's almost like a community and the longer you do it, and the longer you're down, it was like that lady we met, Patricia, who's 78, I think. Patricia is my hero. She's a legend. We love her. It's yeah. people like that, but everyone that I have met, every single person that goes cold water swimming has their own story. And you will have grief and trauma beyond comprehension of what these people have went through. You'll have different people that kind of just going through different things at life and they all find the benefit of cold water. So no one just judgmental. I mean, there's people of all different shapes and sizes that get in the sea. No one bats an eyelid. It's all very much, everyone's on the same buzz as well. It's all, they're all in the same wavelength after. And there's something, something very primal about it. Something very beautiful about it too, that you're on a beach in the sea and just, there's no ego, it's great. Yes, there's no ego. It's and no one liberating. cares what you look like or if you have a freaking belly hanging out over your swimsuit no, or shorts. It's just there, huh? It's just there. And the best bit of it is, it's right on your doorstep and it's absolutely free. Completely free. Completely, free. completely free. Now, whenever I first went that day, I thought I was going to have to, you know, the, the breathing techniques to get into the sea and stuff. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Laugh. I basically ran into the sea and I just kept going. Whatever the <laughs> form I was in that day, I was like, I need to get in the sea. But for me, it was a mental thing. I just, I was drawn to it. I've always loved the sea and I just wanted to get in. And I think maybe it was partly because I didn't get to go on holidays this year. Do you know where, where I would have been in the sea in a, in a warmer place? And I thought I'm still getting in the sea. And thankfully I had the opportunity, thanks to you. But there are physical health benefits as well. It's, there's not, this is a thing. There's not one negative side effect, nothing. The physical benefits are, well, it, it increases your white blood cell count which is all to do with your immune system. So I suppose in this day and age, that's probably the most prevalent one. 
being in cold water, being in the natural light of the sun rays, all that natural vitamin D, it, it boosts your immune system. And um, what about like um, even the salt water is good for the, the skin, isn't it? Salt water is amazing for your skin, your hair, your nails. It's like there's not one side effect. There's there's nothing. I mean, if you're doing it safely, there's not one side effect. So what about when you bring your dog called Arthur? <laughs> <laughs> I was glad he was out swimming with us. I brought my um, bring the dog Arthur, and the reason why I started laughing there because Kate says the other day, so this year I was meant to be in Barbados with the turtles. <laughs> but hell's base swimming with Arthur. <laughs> this is as close as I'm going to get, but no regrets. It's been great. It's been absolutely amazing. But you're you're taking it to the next level, though, Karen. Uh huh. Talk to us about ice. Okay, and don't think for a second you're going to try and talk me into that. It's not happening. Okay. It's not well, happening. The ice K is, so there's, what I didn't realize is that there is an official ice swimming championships throughout the world where you swim in a frozen lake um, and to constitute an ice swim, it has to be in open water below five degrees. So at the minute we've been doing it and it's been about 14. Yesterday it was 13 and a half. So... <laughs> And you'll notice the difference. You'll notice half a degree's difference. Yeah. You will really notice it. Okay. And as you keep going on, like we're now in September, coming up to mid-September, you will notice it gradually getting colder and colder. And then it's October and you're starting to come into the winter months. So, so you, you need to prep us here for the coming uh -huh. months ahead. Well, this users, you have started at the perfect time because you're just gentle. And what you, what you build up is a, is a resilience to the cold. Your body gets used to it. So, so are we going to feel it or are we going to be used to it by the time we get to the winter? Or are we going to be like you're having a laugh every single time another no. degree <laughs> drop? So what, what you kind of do is the, is the water temperature drops, so does your time in the water. So when it's cold, say, when it gets into single figures, five minutes is plenty. Because we've been in, we were in nearly half an hour one day, we were yakking. Mm -hmm. But there was, some mornings have been beautiful sunrises mm -hmm. and we haven't. You don't see the time go. So we'll be in for sort of about five minutes or so. So you're going to swim a kilometre. I'm going to swim a kilometre in a frozen lake under five degrees. Try to, because I'm, I'm not a swimmer. So I did powerlifting for years and had no swimming background. But I have hired a swim coach who's trying to teach me to be more like a swimmer and less like free willy and, <laughs> and go for it. <laughs> you can take Arthur with you. Um, so what about, um, how long do, would that kilometre take you? Well, they have a cut off time of 29 minutes. Okay. So they say that after 20 minutes, hypothermia can set in, water, in water that's, that's, that is that cold. Uh, you're not allowed to wear wetsuits, which is shorts and a swim cap. So after 29 minutes, a doctor will pull you out regardless if you've swam 999 metres or not, as soon as that time's up, you're out and it's over. Why? Why? Uh, you I, like I think... No, but why is he doing it? Why? I think I've well, always why enjoyed... Why is he doing the swim? Why is he doing the swim? I've always been competitive with myself. I've always kind of pushed myself a bit. And I found that I got so much from cold water and probably like dipping or just no swimming about. And I wanted to swim and I think from stopping powerlifting to needing another challenge. It was like, it seemed like the right thing to do. And I, I have well, no regrets, I'm looking forward to it. I just need to learn how to swim better first. I'm confident I can do 29 minutes in frozen water. It's getting a kilometer. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm with the coach now a couple of nights a week. Up until now, bear mm -hmm. in mind, I'm talking about July, August. I've got out of the sea made my way back up to the car and I've tried to post a picture on Instagram of, you know, here's Helms Bay, yo, I'm up early morning. And my hand is like a claw. Like, it's like a chicken scratching my phone when I'm trying to do it. And I can't, I have to sit there at the deep frost before I can even drive. You're, you Not have to actually the, move in yeah. the water at the sea. I but do you think yeah. we're moving? So you're creating, you're creating energy and the energy is making you warmer effectively. So if you put somebody in freezing cold water and just make them stand there, they're not going to last 29 minutes. Whereas if you can breathe and move and create a bit of heat in your body, are you, are you allowed to wear chance. gloves or no. just the hat no. and the shorts? Just the hat and shorts. Like, are we talking speedos here or are we talking well, you the name? Yeah, the worst is the thing. So if we pre mark, if we pre mark shorts, when I swim in the pockets are coming out, they're slowing me down. So I have to get, I have to. We're going to have to streamline you. I'm going to have to streamline me. So I, I, I don't know. But I'm going to have to try it anyway. 
you have to shave your legs and all? And, or is it know. better to have the hairy legs? I don't know. See, for I, the... I think swimmers shave, but then Do? maybe having the hairy legs may keep me a bit warmer. It's so I'm not going to shave. I'm going to say I'll stay warm instead of going fast. Yeah.